back to the black and white issue. The black and white cookie. This was the issue of the black and white. I, there, this was the 50s. It wasn't I just basically blew something, but you'll, pay, you'll go past it because you're a good group. And, <laughs> you know, and it, there could be an aneurysm. You never know what is happening up to my body at this point. I, um, I took this black guy to the Dalton Senior Prom, and this was the 50s where there weren't even black and white cookies yet. That's what I'm trying to say. So in this world, this world's made up of two types of people, reasonable people and people who know everything. They're right, you're wrong, that's the end of it. I meet those kind generally. So I did a show, this guy comes up to me, you're wrong about the black and white cookies. In the 50s, there were Oreos. I'm talking about those cookies that are the size of a Frisbee. <laughs> Yummers, they have black icing nestled next to white icing. This is what I'm talking about. A focaccia Oreo, tiny, <laughs> tiny little miserable crunchy black on one side, black on the other with a dab of white icing in the middle that you would lick off in two seconds and then you'd scrape the rest with your front teeth like a demented squirrel. <laughs> My mother was the primary parent, there's no question. My father basically, he was a lawyer, and he, he was a lawyer in Harlem, and that's where he basically said he didn't want to be at home. And he was like the parakeet who wouldn't come out of his cage. And so my mother was actually into New Age when it was really the people who developed it. Now it's like everything else is too much. Every week there's a new guru. Oh, he has the answers. No, the one last week didn't have the answers. Everybody's got the answers, because there's no question, really, basically. <laughs> I mean, really, and if there is and you know it, good for you, have a good life. So the thing is that my mother was reading the people who started these movements, and she was trying to teach me through a lot of this stuff. And so one day she said to me, Janie, come over here and, and look at the window. Look, at the, look, look across the street. I thought maybe she saw the woman with the breasts, but it was, it was winter and she wasn't there. She she wanted me to look at this tree, because I was depressed. Well, what else was new? I was always depressed. But she said, now that tree on the outside looks bare and dead and barren. Now I'm cheering up already. This is nice. <laughs> <laughs> but on the inside of that tree, growth is taking place. Well, if I was that tree, I'd get an MRI, because that would freak me out. <laughs> growth is taking place, and I don't know. <laughs> And she told me that I was destined for greatness because I was born under a special star. The only problem was that right behind that special star, there was another star that was a little darker, always looked angry, even if it wasn't, and was smoking a joint. That was the star that governed my life when I was younger. And it was drugs. It was drugs. I mean, I did, I did a lot of drugs for a lot of years, wasted a lot of time, had a good time. Um, I, my fav I went through phases, and I went through a hallucinogen phase. I don't know why I wanted to make reality more something. You know, <laughs> it's not hard enough. So I, um, I remember nothing bad ever happened to me, except that I ruined every relationship I was in and, you know, wasted my youth. But aside from that... <laughs> Nothing really bad happened. I remember when I, um, I was in Mexico and I thought that I was going to, first of all, this is insane, I was going to go snorkeling. Now, as a Jew, I don't do athletics. I just don't. And uh, so I'm a bad swimmer. I'd never snorkeled. I'm paranoid. And I thought, well, I'll make it easier. I'll take mescaline. <laughs> So I did, and I, as soon as I'm underwater, I'm now hallucinating a fish that doesn't exist. I see a gapilta fish <laughs> coming toward me, but I wasn't scared because it was in its jar. How fast could it move? <laughs> And even if it reached me, how is it going to get out of the jar? It didn't have hands. So, you know, that was, uh, that was a lot of the childhood. I have grown, though. I have to say, I, you know, I'm really a better person than I used to be. I was a nightmare on a lot of levels. And I, was, I had a temper like my father's, no question. I had, and, I, and basically, 
I haven't had those explosions in a long time because I haven't been in a relationship for a long time, yeah. <laughs> which really was the trigger. But um, the one thing that will set me off is if I ever have to call Verizon, <laughs> Time Warner, <laughs> or anything to do with my computer for technical <laughs> assistance. I really should be taking a tranquilizer before I dial the number because I know dial the number chain it hasn't been around for 50 years. It's not anything. But I, I, I happen to know that what's going to happen. It's always the same thing. For some reason, there's a computer that's insane. It's an insane computer. Could, could we have your name so we can just check the records? Just say your name. Yes, my name is Jane Stroll. Oh, did you say Jane Kroll? No, I didn't say Jane Kroll. I said Jane Stroll. Oh, was that Jim Toll? No, it's not Jim Toll. Anger, it's rising, it's rising. Okay, just say it one more time. What's your name? My name is Jane Stroll. Oh, did you say Henry Kissinger? <laughs> About. I would like to come out with such anger and find your little fucking computer self and mash you into the ground. You work for these bureaucracies that are ruining this country. You are a fucking pain and blight on society. I'll connect you to technical assistance. <laughs> So I have grown, I have grown, and I have, uh, I have, well, this was a poem, and I can't remember the first line because the memory is shot, but um, uh, there's something about I have grown, oh, and my friends will know it, and then they'll scream it out, and I'll lose some more time up here, so it's um, Getting older, I just want to say something about getting older, it sucks, okay? Um, I am not grateful, I mean, I'm grateful I'm alive, yes, I don't want to, I don't particularly want to be dead, but it's a horror. It's a fucking horror getting older on the outside. On the inside, you get stronger. You do. You get stronger. You can handle situations better. Things really are easier. They have to be. If they weren't, when you passed a mirror, that would be it. You'd go right to the upper. Put your head in, light it. It's just, it's, it's a, I read, this is true, I read, I hate when people ever, this is true, but I did read that people, women, in their 70s and 80s are getting facelifts now. How would you know an 80-year-old had a facelift? If you saw you'd think she was having a stroke, you'd be calling 911. I mean, it was a horrible con. My grandmother was wrinkled and had liver spots, and her hair was like white cotton candy that my mother insisted on putting a red ribbon on, like baby Huey. <laughs> she was beautiful. She was beautiful. With all that stuff, she was beautiful. I mean, I just think it's horrible what's basically going on. Of course, if I had more money, I'd have my face lifted like that. But, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's a whole different bulk. And getting older, first of all, I mean, it's easier on, it's not easy, yes it is easier on men. Like many things in the physical world, it's easier on men. Because people believe that men age better than women. That's nonsense. Men don't age better than women. Men simply have the common sense to drop dead before it gets ugly. <laughs> And it really, I mean, so many things happen as you get older. Your senses begin to go. Like, I don't see as well. And I, I have the strongest sense I have is my sense of smell. Fantastic sense of smell. Who needs a good sense of smell in New York? <laughs> ah, it's summer. <laughs> Then you've got the business of the hearing, the hearing. I mean, from all the rock and roll blasting from years and years and years, I, my hearing is I'm not, I don't hear as well as I used to. And you really get tired in a conversation with what? <laughs> what, huh? I, I didn't catch that, what, huh? Huh, huh, huh? Could you say that? I mean, very attractive, so I, I fake it. You should never fake a conversation, you know? Go back to the what's, it's better. Or just walk away and keep your dignity. I'm standing there with someone smiling like the village idiot, and he could be telling me that his father just had a heart attack. Don't fake it, fake the orgasm first, but don't fake that. Not right. And what another horror about getting older, I have to say. Well, I have friends who think that it's, well, they're in denial. They, they're happy they're getting older. 
Oh, I'm excited because you get older, you get wiser. Yeah. No, bullshit, you get wiser. If you were stupid when you were young, <laughs> you're gonna be a moron when you're old. <laughs> will not look as good. So people will have less patience with your stupidity. Just, just the way it is. And, uh, you know, for women, the, the hair issue, there's a hair issue for women. It's like the hair on the body relocates. <laughs> it's not where it used to be. It's decided it wants to move to another area. It's very confusing, very confusing. And it starts simply, it starts simply, it starts with the chin hairs. <laughs> very, very simple. Then it, that area gets too crowded. So you get an enterprising chin hair that decides it's gonna move to the face. And it's gonna take some friends with it. <laughs> and they have mirrors now that magnify your face like 50 times and they have lights in them. So if you believe that other people are seeing what you're seeing when you look in those mirrors, you kill yourself on the spot. You're the missing link in those mirrors. So I tweeze myself into oblivion. I mean, that's the truth. I have more tweezers than I have friends at this point. Yeah, it's a wonderful thing getting old. It's just, I, I just really adore it. Um, I'm waiting for the hump, you know, it's just uh, <laughs> really exciting. I, um, another thing that aging is really difficult is the, is the, in the area, the sexual area. Because if I was smart, I would have stayed with one of the men that I got involved in when I was younger. Even if I hated his guts, I would have stayed with him. Because you're getting old and decrepit together. And you accept it. You accept the stuff you're seeing. He would accept the fact that I have so many veins on the back of my leg, it's like a Picasso painting at this point. And I would accept the fact that his testicles are getting so low that they're dusting the furniture. <laughs> At least the furniture's getting dusted. <laughs> you know, but there's gonna be a time, I know there's gonna be another guy because I still have a few of my own hormones and the rest come from my doctor's prescription pad. <laughs> but I, that means I'm still, I, you know, I like sex. And I have a friend who gave me a book, and she was married when she did this, the, you know, I don't like calling women bitches, but that's what she was, gave me a book, Sex for One. <laughs> Thank you, that's nice. Is that like table for one? Theater seat for one? Dildo for one? Thank you, thank you for the faith that I'm ever gonna meet someone. Thank you. God. <laughs>